look back at it back out here in the garage. I've got a couple of follow-ups from my previous videos. Hey, I appreciate all the support. I got some awesome comments, some really great discussion on how to set up your drive line and your pinion angle. Very cool. I'm not the expert on it. I, I try to study, I try to share what I've learned, uh, really just trying to build a community and help everybody out. Hey, if I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, if you got a different opinion, let's share it. It's awesome, it's healthy, it's good. Uh, as long as we got the end state of just being a bunch of dudes and gals that are trying to get their hot rods running and go out and enjoy them together, all right? So let's keep that up. A couple follow-ups from my last video. First one, this is funny. Uh, my brother watched the video where I painted the lines on the floor. And then he sent me a uh, chalk line. <laughs> Said I could snap a line with that thing on the floor and then sweep it up afterwards. So, hey, thanks a lot, bro. Appreciate that. Couple, another thing I wanted to point out. One important deal that I did not specify in my last video, uh, or in the video when I set up my rear suspension and alignment off of the lines here on the floor, one thing I didn't address was these top bars. Um... It's important, they play two important roles, okay? The first thing that those top bars are gonna do is they're gonna help set that pinion angle, okay? Extend them, retract them, change my pinion angle. The second thing they do is they locate the rear axle in the frame side for side, or they locate the frame over the rear axle, probably more accurately. And when I put mine together and was measuring things up, I just didn't like how one of my sides was was way out of whack from the other one. And I just, I couldn't figure that out until I started measuring side for side and realized I was about a half inch out. So I squared that up, I extended one, retracted the other, and I brought my frame in exactly dead center on the rear axle. And then what I had to do was go through the process one more time, readjusting essentially just one of my lower links uh, to bring it all back into square. So there was a real good lesson, uh, important lesson learned on that one, and I can't miss that. I wanna share with you guys uh, it all works together. This whole suspension stuff works together. So you change one thing, probably going to change a bunch of other stuff. So, all right, that's the wrap up on that one. In a second here, I'll show you what I got planned for today. Okay, for, so for today's project, this is what I wanted to be doing. I wanted to be putting brakes on the frame and squaring that whole process away. When I laid everything out, took inventory though, I was a couple parts short. And, uh, you know, I don't usually like express my displeasure with uh automotive support places but i went down to the local box store AutoZone, and uh started asking for like brake parts the pieces i need to make this thing happen and the, the dude working there literally said i don't think i can help you man you're probably gonna have to go online and order that stuff so i took his advice and said thanks i'll go order it online uh let that be the lesson for that guy but I kind of scrounged up what I had and uh, a few things short. I'm short on my two PSI uh, residual pressure valve for my brakes. Um, missing a bunch of these fittings, the uh, eighth to, uh, what is that, three eighths, where I can put my three sixteenths line into. You know, so I'm, I'm missing some things. So I figured I better just order them online. So I did, ordered them up. I gotta wait a few days for them to come in. Once they come in, I should be able to just start piecing that whole system together and plumb it on the car, and that'll be great. Not gonna be able to get to that today though. So I kinda gotta do what I'm dreading. I don't know why I hate working on the floors in this thing so much. Maybe because it was such a pain and I'm not a quilt maker, and that's what it felt like stitching each of these panels in here. But I gotta tackle this a little bit more. I really want to get a little primer and paint on this uh, on this whole inside, but before I get to that, I have some stuff to clean up. Like, I got to finish around where my brake pedal went. Um, I've got to finish up these corners. Can you see that down there? That corner is open. And same on the other side. It needs to be patched up. But I got a plan to get there for it. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So I've been learning a lot on sheet metal. I'm not too afraid of just cutting something up and starting to weld on it, but I did get afraid of these quarter panels here. I'll show you here. I'll shine my light down there and you can see all that rot through there. So that all needs to be fixed. And if you look here, the fellow that had the car before me started on this project, attempted to fix that. And you can see that, that little patch that's laid in there. Now, what's got me concerned here 
is these Model A's, it's a compound curve here, okay? So there's a curve that comes this way and it curves down. And when this patch panel went in, it, 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 it has neither of those curves. So it, it actually looks uh, fairly terrible, worse than I want it to. So I was trying to figure out how to patch that up and kind of lost confidence in my ability to, to bang out a piece of metal to fit that. So I got to looking around and I went the easy route. I found these on uh, eBay and it was, oh, it was less than $100 shipped for a pair. And I thought, you know what? I hate just spending money to fix hot rods. This isn't like one of those big, you know, shows you see on TV with a bunch of sponsors. I'm sponsoring this whole project off of money I earned off another hot rod I sold. So it's limited, but I prioritize and bought this. So if you check it out, uh, when I line it up there, it seems like it's a, it's a pretty good replacement. And if I can put it in the light here, I hope you can tell that it carries both the compound curves very nicely. So much as I hate doing sheet metal stuff, I'm probably just gonna tear into that today. So I'm gonna get my little welder, stitch up the floor, replace these panels, uh, well, pull the panels off and get in there and make use of that opportunity to tie up all the loose ends inside to put my patch panels on. And then the inside of the car should be just about ready to seam seal, spray, and wrap it up. Since I think this video will be done before I hit that process, do me a favor, uh, put down a comment. If you've done this before, what do I do first? Seam seal it, prime it, then paint it, do I prime it, then seam seal it, then paint it? You guys tell me. And I'm talking about all these seams along here uh, where my welds are. Some of these welds I won't seam seal because they're complete, but like down here I just had to stitch it. And there's gonna be little holes if I don't seam seal it. So you guys have done really good and helped me out along the way. I appreciate the, the support and inputs and comments. So if you've done this, give me your, uh, your opinion on that. Uh, Cause I'm sure it comes down to opinion, but if you've done it and you know it works best, let me know. So, enough of that, I'm gonna get after it. see what kind of stuff we had to fight through here this had bolts quarter inch bolts all the way through here all the way down here in the back so you saw in the time lapse they even had a little help out here ripping out all the bolts all the way around and then I drilled through the rivets in the front and I don't know why I thought this panel was just gonna fly out of there been in there for 90 years 91 years Anyway, I've got to come in here now and maybe drill these rivets out a little bit better and then do a little, uh, after I have to get up my buddy BH, big hammer, and uh, work that thing loose. So, I'll be back. There's no such thing as a quick project. I'll show you what I got going on here. This is all loose on the inside here. <clears throat> okay, but let's crawl down underneath. I gotta tell you, you know, I bought this as a the beginning of a hot rod project, and I put most of the floors in, uh, but a lot of this was already done, like this here. Um, so the guy that did this work before, uh, I don't know, bless his heart, uh, tried, but I don't know what this is. Like this hangs down below the below the body line. So this needs to be removed, but also here's what's going on here. All this, this panel needs to come out. 
and it's all booger welded in here so I think I'm going to introduce my friend the cutting wheel I'm going to do a little marking and figuring and then we're going to go to town and we're going to get we're going to get this out and then it looks like I get to do the same thing on that side uh, it looks like he used I don't know did he chew it off to make those fit I don't know oh hey there's a sharpie hiding in there Oh, you can see I braced it up here. I put a good brace here and then holding it up with the jack in the front just to keep it kind of square so that it doesn't all fall apart when it comes up. This panel finally comes out. Okay, back to work. Okay, I got this panel off finally. You can see here, that's how she went. I wish I'd been filming. I could have showed you guys this little tool if you guys are unaware. It's for... Uh, drilling around spot welds so that's what these big giant holes are here from basically you find a spot weld which sometimes are hard to find it would just be a little divot center punch it right in the middle put this guy right in there and then when you drill through it'll just pop off of there and then all you got to do is come through with your grinder and pick up the little bit of the spot weld that's left on there anyway i'm really glad i got this off because there's a lot of there's a lot going on in here that i need to try to fix up I need to weld a triangle in here. That'll give me a chance to do that, patch that up. And then I need to clean this up, take my new panel here. It doesn't have any holes in it, so I'll have to come in here and mount it, mark my holes, take it out, drill my holes, and then I'll just bolt it all in, seam seal it in there, so. Okay, so this is the driver's side of the car. I'm gonna try to show you in here just exactly how this little uh, spot weld tool works remover tool so what I'll do is I'll just let's get a little bit closer there we go okay so in order to use this tool we'll come along here and we'll find us a spot weld like here's one right here and if you can't find them sometimes you can take a little bit of scotch bright and you hit the high spots and then the low spots of a spot weld will stick out I'll come in here, put my center punch in there, give it a whack, and I'll come in with this guy here, over the spot weld and go for it. Spot welds out. Now I've got one, two, three rivets to go and probably three more spot welds and this thing will be released and ready to go. Okay, check out what I got here. I've been getting rid of spot welds and rivets, knocking those holes out. I've got to come down here and split it on the bottom where it's been welded up. This side's worse than the other side. You can see it, it's nasty there and this, this whatever attempt at fixing it didn't work so and and I think this is Bondo in here goodness anyway I gotta clean that all up this side just looks nasty with that big hole in it I guess it's progress right all right well kind of a mishmash of stuff there as I started talking about brakes and ended up taking body panels off the car and I hate ending a video with a project half done but I'm going to this yeah, so I'm going to wrap that one up today. I hate leaving a project half done and calling a video good, but I hate even worse taking a week to finish a project and then putting a video out and it's long. So let's just go with this. I'm going to call this good. Do me a favor though, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, ring the bell so you get a notification when the next part of this one pops up or anytime I put out a new video. And uh, man, I sure appreciate everybody's continued support. Keep asking the questions, giving the comments. You guys are awesome. Let's build this community.